Hello Year Sixes, my name's Miss Whiston and I am Director of Teaching and Learning here at Ormiston Horizon Academy. I am also a Maths teacher and I'm here to read you your next chapter. The chapter is called Looking for Trouble. Alex saw it the moment he opened his eyes. It would have been obvious to anyone who slept in the bed, but of course nobody had slept there since Ian Ryder had been killed. It was a triangle of white slipped into a fold in the canopy above the four-poster bed. You had to be lying on your back to see it, like Alex was now. It was out of his reach. He had to balance on a chair to he had to balance a chair on the mattress and then stand on the chair to reach it. Wobbling, almost falling, he finally managed to trap it between his fingers and pull it out. It was a square of paper, folded twice. Someone had drawn on it, a strange design with what looked like a reference number beneath it. There wasn't very much of it, but Alex recognised Ian Ryder's handwriting. What did it mean? He pulled some of the clothes, went over to the table and took out a sheet of plain paper. Quickly, he found a, he wrote a brief message in block capitals. Found this in Ian Ryder's room. Can you make any sense of it? Then he found his Game Boy, inserted the Nemesis cartridge into the back, turned it on and passed the screen over to and passed the screen over the two sheets of paper, scanning his first message and then the design. Instantaneously, he knew a machine would have clicked on in Mrs. Jones's office in London and a copy of the two sheets would have, been, would have scrolled out of the back. Maybe she could work, out, work it out. She was, after all, meant to work for intelligence. Finally, Alex turned off the machine, then removed it the back and hid the folded paper in the battery compartment. The diagram had to be important. Ian Ryder had hidden it. Maybe it was what had cost him his life. There was a knock at the door. Alex went over and opened it. Mr. Grin was standing outside, still wearing his butler costume. Good morning, Alex said. Grr. Mr. Grin gestured and Alex followed him back down the corridor and out of the house. He felt relieved to be out in the air, away from all the oppressive artwork. As they paused in front of the fountains, there was a sudden roar and a propeller-driven cargo plane dipped down over the roof of the house and landed on the runway. If Grin go, Mr Grin explained. Just what I thought, Alex said. They reached the first of the modern buildings and Mr Grin pressed his hand against a glass plate next to the door. There was a green glow as his fingerprints were red and a moment later the door slid soundlessly open. Everything was different on the other side of the door. From the art and the elegance of the main house, Alex could have stepped into the next century. Long white corridors with metallic floors, halogen lights, the unnatural chill of air conditioning, another world. A woman was waiting for them, broad-shouldered and severe, her blonde hair twisted into the tightest of buns. She had a strangely blank, moon-shaped face, wire-rimmed spectacles, and no makeup apart from a smear of yellow lipstick. She wore a white coat with a name tag pinned to the uh, top pocket. It read, Bowl. You must be Felix, she said. Or is it now, I understand, Alex? Yes. Yeah. Let me introduce myself. I am Fraulein Bowl. She had a thick German accent. You may call me Nadia, she said. She glanced at Mr. Grin. I will take him from here. Mr. Grin nodded and left the building. This way, Bowl began to walk. We have four blocks here. Block A, where we are now, is administration and recreation. Block B is software development. Block C is research and storage. Block D is where the main storm breaker assembly line is found. Where's breakfast? Alex asked. Have you not eaten? I will send you a sandwich. Her sale is very clean for you to begin at once with the experience. She walked like a soldier, straight backed, her feet, in tight black leather shoes wrapping against the floor. Alex followed her through another door and into a bare square room with a chair and a desk and on the desk the first storm breaker he had ever seen. It was a beautiful machine. iMac might have been the first computer with a real sense of design but the storm breaker had far surpassed it. It was black apart from a white lightning bolt down the side and the screen could have been a porthole into outer space. Alex sat behind the desk and turned it on. The computer booted itself instantly. A second fork of animated lightning sliced across the screen. 
with a swirl of clouds, and then in the burning red letters, SC, the logo of Sail Enterprises. Seconds later, the desktop appeared with icons for math, English, French, every subject ready for access. Even in those brief seconds, Alex could feel the speed and the power of, of the computer, and Hera's sale was going to put in but one in every school in the country. He had to admire the man. It was an incredible gift. I leave you here, Frau Lemboro said. It is better for you, I think, to explore the Stormbreaker on your own. Tonight you will have dinner with her cell and you will tell him your feeling. Yeah, I'll tell him my feeling. I will have the sandwich sent in to you, but I must ask you not to leave the room. There is, you understand the security. Whatever you say, Mrs. Ball, Alex asked, Alex said. The woman left. Alex opened one of the programs and for the next three hours lost himself in a state of the art, a state of the heart software of the Stormbreaker. Even when his sandwich arrived, he ignored it, letting it curl on the plate. He would never have said that schoolwork was fun, but he had to admit that the computer made it lively. The history program brought the Battle of Fort Stanley to life with music and video clips. How to extract water, oxygen from water? The science program did it in front of his eyes. The Stormbreaker even managed to make algebra almost bearable, which was more than Mr. Donovan at Brooklyn had ever done. The next time Alex looked at his watch, it was one o'clock. He had been in the room for over four hours. He stretched and stood up. Nadia Ball had told him not to leave, but if there were any secrets to be found in Sale Enterprises, he wasn't going to find them here. He walked over to the door and was surprised to find that it opened as he approached. He went out, into the corridor, there was nobody in sight. Time to move. 